Hey everyone, this is Ant Minor Repair. Uh, tonight we're going to continue our discussion on temperature sensors. And uh, I was going to bring you a pristine board, but as in all used boards, this one has been baked and the heat sinks uh, just, just fall off. So I lost a few. And then I, I wanted to see if this was a board I'd worked on, so I removed the bottom. So what this board is doing is um, when you use the Ant Minor firmware, um, it's basically saying uh, wrong temperature sensor type and shutting down and won't even run the other boards. So pretty much of a hard stop. It does find 30 chips on this. Um, these chips are cooked and, and well used. I mean, this, this board has been run hot and has been repaired in, in bad ways um, for sure Be before I got it. Um, I'm not sure I'm helping the case anymore. So anyway, tonight we're going to look at another strategy maybe of, of looking for uh, temperature sensor problems. Um, and if you like this content, hang on. Um, just want to make a note. Uh, did you know 73% of you watching this video haven't subscribed to my channel? And I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel because um, I'm trying to make a, a certain minimum for YouTube, which is a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within a 12 month period. And then I can actually get paid a little bit for doing this. Not a lot, probably, you know, a whopping 25 or 50 bucks a month. But, um, uh, you know, there's only a certain subset of us that care about watching these things. But I'd appreciate your help by, um, you can hit the bell for notifi notification when I do publish a video and the subscribe button to subscribe. And I'd really appreciate it if you do that, especially if you enjoy this content. All right, and then one last note, um, you may be tempted to ask questions on YouTube and I'll try to answer them, but the real place where everything's happening, if you have any inclination of fixing your own board, um, there's a Discord channel link. And in that Discord channel, we've got almost 500 people there. And a lot of them are very experienced board fixers. And it's and we're, we're trying to put together parts lists, we're, we're talking about how to solder stuff, we're talking about techniques to look for problems in boards, and we're broken it out by all the types of boards. Um, so I highly recommend if you have that inkling and want to join that community, please do. There's a lot of uh, huge wealth of resources and information there. Um, so, all right. So let me tell you about this. Um, it stopped working and my amp miner wouldn't start. Um, I put it on the test fixture. The test fixture came back and said uh, temperature sensors three and four, which I think are underneath these chips and involved with these chips are bad. So I took the board out and I, I, I did have to pull this off to check sure I, I, I worked on this. And I, I actually just to see what happened, replaced the temperature sensor. So I've worked on this board. I put it back in. Sure enough, uh, nothing else. It still had the same error. And so I said, okay, well, I'll move it to Brains OS. Brains OS sometimes doesn't care if you don't have a temperature sensor. And Brains will start it up, but then after a while, it gives this weird error of dangerous MRG between the chips. So either it doesn't like the fact that it can't communicate with these temperature sensors, or there's something else wrong with this board. And so I want to discuss some possible theories about these temperature sensors um, with these boards. I've read a couple documents. Um, one, I think Zeus has an article of, hey, if you got a can't find temperature sensors on the whole board, you know, it may not be the temperature sensors. And they're pretty adamant in saying that um, it's either your power supply and, and you're not powering the chips enough so they can power the temperature sensors or the board and it can, it can do its processing right or chip. Now this is where it gets a little dicey. They say chip U1 and the last chip. So you'd like to call this U1 and the last chip, but actually on these boards, U1 is right here. Now I haven't tested U1 lately for sure. I have one board with four temperature sensors out, so it's like a hard failure, but I, I found another problem with it. So um, what I'd like to point out is, is, is Zeus is saying it's this, this, or this. Now, why would they say temperature sensors are affected by these? If these two or one of these two chips is bad, it causes your temperature sensors to go bad. And I'm getting 30 ASICs out of this when it starts up. What the heck could be going wrong? So that's what I'm going to attempt to talk about tonight. Um, plus, we'll take another little sidetrack into badly repaired boards or cheaply repaired boards for probably one more repair before you replace the whole thing. So um, I think I know it's kind of small but next to this capacitor and in between the capacitor and the chip 
Um, let me see if I can do this. I'm, I'm not going to put my microscope. You can kind of see this. So, so here's your jumper in here. And, and, and the fact is, is the AntMiner software has to talk to somebody to talk to the temperature sensor to get the temperature sensor out. So either it's happening on the PIC chip that's underneath here on the other side of the board, or it's talking directly to the chips through the software driver that's talking to the board. It's got to kind of be one of those two things. So, and, and in all honesty, I'm not sure which one, but I do notice there's these two chips. I think these are CT1F chips here, these, these little two little six-legged chips. Those actually are um, voltage converters, but they also are serial, serial lines. And so this board does pre prescribe to a certain format. Um, the temperature sensor does on sending eight bits and an acknowledge, eight bits and acknowledge. I read the whole, um, on a different video about temperature sensors, we looked at the, the data sheet for a temp temperature sensor, but I'm kind of thinking that these two guys are responsible for a lot of the communications that happen on the board. So um, I've never seen one bad. I don't quite know how to test one. I, I think I'm gonna buy an oscilloscope and start probing around and seeing what kind of waveforms people are putting out. But um, just so you let you know, I think these guys are directly connected to the power of the first chip. I think they supply 1.8 or 0.08 volts to this first chip because you notice there's no LDOs like are on the other side of the part. I, I think these guys are powered from, from this unit somewhere, maybe these dudes. And then these guys get power and take it from 3.3 down to 1.8 and 0.8, probably dependent on a bunch of resistors and capacitors here. Um, likewise, on this side of the board, there, I, I believe you would call this, um, oh shoot, it's like a booster, but it's not. Um, this is like a booster circuit or a, a, a there's a term for it. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little stupid on my language right now. This basically takes higher voltage and drops it down. Um, and I haven't really completely learned about this. There's a lot of discussion on Discord about this circuit on the L3 plus boards that they give all sorts of grief. Um, I think I have a bad one on one of my AntMiner boards, but there is this small chip way over here. And literally I've undefined, I, I don't, don't know exactly what it is, but I have a good idea what it is. Its markings are SXE and then 1923, and I've only seen one other number. So most of them are SXE1923. Um, it almost looks like an EEPROM chip, but it's not, um, because here's the power circuit and it's, it is powering this row of chips with some respect. So I think what this chip is, and I think I've got a nail, I'm, I'm probably gonna post it to the Discord form see if somebody else knows. Um, this chip also can do serial communications and it can also convert voltage from 3.3 like to 1.8, all through this little chip right here. So it appears that we may have serial communications going this way and serial communications going this way. Maybe this one's RO and these are the rest of them. I don't know, maybe that's how they configured the board. But um, that brings us to a point. If, if I've got temperature sensors here and these are good, and the board can't find these, it's very unlikely both of them, now let me expand out because I'm pointing at the board and you can't see. So if I have temperature sensors that are bad right here and these are good, it's very unlikely that two of these went bad at once unless some voltage surge went through. So I did check the voltages on all these and they, they checked out pretty good, but I replaced them just as a precaution. So they're new. I think the solder is good, not 100% sure, but I think so. I mean, it didn't complain. Well, it did complain. What can it talked to him and they came back with the wrong type. So something's not talking to him, right? So then the question becomes is how do those temperature sensors on the other side of this chip communicate back to here? And I think the answer that Zeus is pointing to is that they have to travel along the serial lines through the chips to get back. Therefore, if one of these chips is bad and not communicating and these guys are trying to communicate, they're gonna show up bad. And I'm not sure which communication channel they're using. There's a CI and it's an RI. I think that's a transmit receive probably. And you can look at the chip diagram and they go out. Um, but somewhere along here, and it's very highly probable, I have a bad chip. 
and it's stopping the communication. Now, the problem is I don't know if these guys go out this side and talk to it, or I don't know if these guys all go back through and talk to that. I have noticed that on some errors with temperature chips, it'll start one, two, and three and not include zero, or it might go zero, one, two, three, four, or it might go, or two, three, or it might go two, three. So I'm kind of thinking there's a daisy chain. So another theory is that this could be bad and it's not allowing it to talk to this one because it's stopping it just like how the clock signal could be bad and it doesn't go through. So, so there's a lot of different options and just a lot of questions I have that are unanswered. So um, I'm attempting with these boards to try to explore what fixes it. And, and there may be lots of these videos where we don't get a final resolution, but um, I had another board that had four no good ones and there was a chip like right here. It was completely dead. I would do diode resistance. It was absolutely zero. Yet it found 30 chips and tried to run the board. So I don't know how that worked, um, but this chip was dead. So I replaced it. Still having some issues with it. So I haven't been able to test it. So having a few problems with the chip transplant. I get a good chip transplant and it looks like there's no power on the clock um, line. So I've, I've been working on that. So I can't report back the results of that yet. But tonight I thought um, we should look at these chips and then another problem arose. So what I've done, um, if you guys don't know and you're watching this for the first time, is you can measure resistance on these chips. I'm gonna do one. So I've got a fluke meter and hopefully you can kind of see the display. Let me see if I can, uh, if I tilt this, I think it'll work. I want you to be able to see this. So here's a Q-tip, let's do this. I'll do two Q-tips and a heat sink. Ah, there we go, the heat sink worked. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do, I mean, you've got to assume, yeah, okay, I'll do better than that. I do better than that, fixing my boards. But. Okay, so down in here, let me see how close I can get it. So what you're seeing, I'm not under a microscope, but oh, come on now. Down in here are the tests are the test pins and you've got the chip and then there's more test pins here. So these are the test pins between the chip. So what I do is on the fluke meter, you can test, I put it on ohms and then if you press a couple times, you get the diode reading. And this is a T17. So, so my measurements for these chips should be consistently like 12 or 1.2. So if I measure like, you see, this would be the I think it's the RI line. It's the farthest away from the clock. So if I touch this, it's at 12.16, um, 1.2. They call it 1200. Um, that's good. There's one that's a little lower, 11. The middle one for RO is really low. It stays 700. And on the outside, it goes to 400. And then um, another 1200. And then another 1200. Um, so, so what I did with this board already was I spot checked every single chip to see that those were good because the last board with temperature sensor problems, I found a chip that was shorted. It was easy to find, not on the tester. I didn't have to sit there and measure voltages for two hours before I got every chip. Um, so, so I did that. Now, I ran into a problem. <laughs> this is what complicates matters. So, so I'll choose this chip and I'll touch the clock port. And if you notice, there's nothing. So um, this is one of those boards that the people, I believe it would be in China, not, nothing against him, it was a business decision, I'm sure on a mining farm, repaired this rather quickly. So I've got, I've got thermal pasted, I think I've got, let me see if this guy's any good. I can't test all the chips because they've used thermal paste for this, 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 this. I think this one's back to good. Yeah. So these four, I can't fully test them. Everybody else tested with diode resistance good, but I can't test these four because they've been thermal pasted and glued to the board. So I have another video that I did about these chips that you can't seat solder on um, in, a, in a fix if you don't want to replace the chip and normally you don't want to replace a chip. The outsides will still stick solder and I am running some boards successfully like that. Um, what happened is I fixed this board before and if you handle the heat sinks too hard, they will fall off. Even though they're on good and they will cool the board. Um, 
what else are you going to do? Replace the chip. So, so I, I figured out a way to get the heat sink on and I, I baby it and it sits in there and it runs. So tonight I'm going to take these off. We're going to check the diode resistance of this. So I'm going to have to pull these off and I'm going to have to do a lot of cleaning, but we can test the butt diode resistance without you watching me have to clean these. And if I can't find any bad chips this way, I'm not sure where I go. I probably go back to testing voltages, maybe, especially around the heat of the temp sensors. So let's do that. Um, even though these are glued and I could probably pull them off, heat certainly helps. So I'm going to, oh, if you can look down here, let me see if you can tell. There's a light shining, but if you look in here, it's not quite like this one. Although this one I can see it too. Do you see the white underneath there? See that white circle? That's the putty they used to stick these. And I get several of these boards when I buy miners from China. And I, the problem is when you're looking, you can't test any voltage. They don't conduct electricity. So it's kind of a worthless fix for if you're like us and want to keep our cards going. So I'm gonna, um, you want to make sure they're that way before you take them off. You can test the voltage. So I've got these four. I think that's the case. Yeah. So I'm going to start here. So I still use heat to pull it off. I've got my heat gun on them. Um, you'll know when you hit one, when you're sitting here heating it, waiting for the heat sink to come off, and it just won't come off. So, you know, you gently try, you gently try. It's stuck on there. So... I do get it hot and then I just very lightly start to rock it once it's warm. Not quite warm yet. So I'm at 380 on my temperature. I usually try to stay around 378, 380. So I'm just going to start rocking this. And once it gets warm enough, it'll kind of peel off. Shouldn't pull the chip off. I haven't pulled one off yet. There it went. There we go. Look at that mess. Isn't that lovely to work around? All right, so there's one. Let's get the other one. What a mess. This person didn't even care because they've glued all the resistors, which means when you're cleaning it, you have a chance of pulling the resistors off. It's a real drag. Here's this one. Another one. Sorry for the glare and the light. It's really hard for me to get this right on the video. Oh, look, that guy's dead or in the door now too. I see it there. So they did a middle one here. I'll probably pull him off too. Okay. And last one. Yeah, this one's done that way and this one's done that way. I think that one is too. So this whole board was cooked so bad that the, the, the surface of the chip was removed. And so now solder won't stick. Come on. It to just be gentle. Sometimes working it back and forth is okay. There it goes. All right. I'm going to take these off because I probably didn't measure these accurately. And you kind of see the mess. I have a thermal paste glue mess to clean up on this board. And then I have the problem of getting the heat sinks back on. The middle ones come off a little more readily. And that looks drier in a bone, that paste already anyway. So they got it to a shop. It had been run so hot. that they couldn't even solder the heat sinks back on. But instead of replacing all the chips, I, I guess that's okay. That's like, I don't know what that is, a bug or something. Okay, that's kind of my technique, so. If I get to a board like this, I'll typically, whenever I can, clean it up and I'll use my technique instead. I'm more comfortable, even if my technique may not keep the chip cool, either way, you're gonna have to replace the chip eventually. So it looks like I couldn't test these guys. So why don't we do that? 
So we're going to look for bad chips um, for this temp sensor. We're looking for something with a short. So let me get this up. We're still on diode mode. So I'm going to start with this guy. So I'm going to dig into that thermal paste. Lovely. We're going to check it. So it's 1175 is OK. 11. You have to test every one because it could just be one that's shorted. Yeah, so all those are good. If you're testing this, you get a 0.4 on one of the outer test points is bad. You notice I'm testing each side of the chip. Now I'm going so fast that if, if, if there happened to be a short between one of these two pins and I was getting the same reading, I, I wouldn't have noticed. And, and yeah, it's my fault. And they're jumping around quite a bit, but this is, let me clean that off so I get a connection. Yeah, so about 11. 10, six, 11, and 11. So let me try going out this chip, 11. Six, seven, seven. Okay, so those are good. I'm going to go to this one. So far, so good. They're supposed to be 1200, but if they're consistently like in the 11s or even almost high 12s, it's okay. So that line was good. Go back to this one. So I did this for the rest of the board, pretty much. So needless to say, this board is going to require a lot of work to get it even with the heat sinks back on the test. And then I'm going to have to handle it so carefully, I can't grab it by the heat sinks to pull it. So. Well, thermal paste is pretty dry. So most of the stuff I get is a little bit wet. Everything's good so far. Okay, so those chips pass the test. Hmm. So my next thing is going to be, I'm going to strip the board of all the heat sinks. Yeah, I'm going to clean these up, but I'm going to start looking for solder balls all the way through. Some solder ball that might just be jiggling in between a communications port and just causing enough noise that it's, it's bad. I'll also go through and check every capacitor, not with a voltmeter, but just by visual. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. So this has been my process. Like I said, last time I found a bad chip around here and I think that was my problem. It was not communicating at all. Not sure how it was running, but it was. Um, I tested it five times on the voltmeter before I pulled it. Um, and now I got my new chip is, is talking except for the clock. So I gotta figure out why. So anyway, so far nothing conclusive on this. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead off video and clean all this up, remove the rest of these, and I'm going to go through every single chip and just visually inspect it. I do have one chip right here. Um, you can see that mark right there kind of on the video. That's kind of a chink taken out of the top of it. Um, so, so I would look at every chip and just visually inspect it and, and try to form a hypothesis of maybe why it might not be communicating. I think then if all the chips are good, I'm going to start paying attention to these two serial drivers and maybe even this guy over here and seeing that they can talk. And then, you know, eventually there is the circuit that gets over to the pick chip. So um, won't be unheard of that I, I, I maybe track back to that and just keep visually inspecting things. But two of these sensors are working, two are not. So I, I think it's something from here to where they need to talk to. And right now I'm working on the assumption that they're talking to up to these guys up here. So, all right. So I have a lot of cleanup to do with a mess that this board was repaired to never be repaired again, I think, which is a bummer. So I've run into these. I have got them back to working order, but they're real difficult. So I gotta be real careful removing this, uh, this stuff. Because basically I, see there's a, I know there's a resistor here, a single one. So I kind of try to steer around it. I just kind of, sometimes they're good and pop off. Sometimes the guys are real good and they put the glue out here and out here and don't go in the resistors. But when they go into the resistors, you're probably sure to pull one off. It sure does make a mess. So, not to say we don't have a solder ball in here too. The other places I'm going to test are the voltages on these two capacitors. There's two capacitors on each side and actually the LDOs are on the other side and they, they pass. I believe the voltage gets passed this way except for 1.8 um, LDO underneath there. Let me see if I can find that resistor and not munge it up. You're in there somewhere. I think it's right there. Um, another thing I do is I don't always just use my tweezers. I, I Sometimes a little bit of alcohol helps cleaning this up, but it's a real mess. I guarantee you. Um, I just took the tack that every board I find like this, I either want my board maintainable or I don't even want it in there. I don't want to have to spend hours doing this. So I make them so they're soldered on somehow. And these have been moved and these have the same problem and they're, they're on there. I got them on there and they're sticking using this, this edge around the chip and using a little bit of a um, tiny bit of solder paste. Here, even though it doesn't stick, it contacts it. They use this filler. So um, this is what I'll be up for for the rest of the time on this board. I may come back when I find out the solution. If I don't find the solution, it's going to stay around, and I'll keep coming back to it. You know, it might take me a while, but um, I'm determined to find out what causes these temperature sensors to go bad. And I think the next step is to grab an oscilloscope and maybe try to measure what they're sending, maybe what they're sending in between the chip and it, and also what the chip is trying to send out. So um, that'll be a stretch for me. I've never used an oscilloscope like that, but I'm going to go probably get one and learn. And um, I will certainly share that with you guys for that. So I'm going to end this video. You see my technique. Um, if, you, if you missed the first video, go find it. But essentially, I talked about um, these temperature sensors. There's four on the T17 board. Making a chart and measuring all the resistances to see if you can find a bad one. I have successfully found a bad one using that technique. Um, but one technique doesn't find everything, right? So I've already replaced these just to do it so I could because I have them. And uh, then I'm going to go through here. I'm probably going to clean off the rest of the board, and I might just go fishing for bad capacitors, resistors for a while. Somebody's not communicating in here, and I'm going to find it. Okay? Thank you for watching. Remember, hit the subscribe button, please. 73% of you guys watching this have not subscribed, and you could really help me out. It's not like I'm tracking you. They just count it as a subscription for me and YouTube's already tracking either way. So it doesn't matter. That's Google for you. So um, that's what they do. And that's why YouTube's free. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Um, appreciate you watching. And until next time, we'll continue this discussion on temperature sensors.